So how are pages organized inside? Let's look at a specific page. Let's say page 56. And that page contains a number of tuples. So what you can identify in a page are three regions. The first is a header containing some meta information that we look at later on. That might be information like checksums, additional checksums to see whether the data you got back from storage is correct or information suitable for recovery purposes. We will get to, back to that as well in other videos later on. Then there is the actual data that is like the second region. So there's header and then there's the data. And this data region again is split in two regions. The first is here that is an indirection again. That is a little array with specific addresses inside the page. Th that array contains slots. Those are the slots that are being managed inside this particular page. And here at the bottom of the page is the actual data you want to store. So what this means is a tuple that sits on a specific page is addressed with two different values. So the first is a page ID, which is typically the virtual page ID. And then there's a slot inside the page that is this value three for this example. So if you want to retrieve the data at this address inside the page, we have to go to slot three, which is zero, one, two, three. We have to follow this arrow here and then we end up here. So this is the data that we're interested in. So this arrow, of course, is implemented in a way that it is an offset inside that particular page. So this points to an address inside this particular page. And usually it also has some information somewhere telling you how large is that byte array? How large is this region here? So typically we will assume that this chunk that's, that's pointed to here is some tuple. But it doesn't have to be like that. It can be of any data type. It may be an object. It may be part of an image. It may be part of a column, whatever, whatever. Typically, it'll be a tuple with multiple values, but it doesn't have to be like that. So the bottom line to understand here is it's another indirection inside the page. Now we have so many indirections in database systems. Here's another one inside the page. Here's another example. 56 comma 5 means we have to go to slot 5 in page 56. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's this one. So that is a tuple that's being referred to by this address. So these type of addresses are often called row IDs. Again, keep in mind, yes, very often they point to tuples. They point to rows in a relation, but they don't have to. This indirection works for any type of chunk you want to store inside a page. So what, what is inside such a byte array, such a chunk, we don't have to talk about at this point in time, actually. So what this allows you to do is you don't have to expose this address that is used inside to the outside world. In a slotted page, you can move around those chunks without changing the outside address. So for example, if we move this chunk inside the page to a different position, say we move it down here, then we don't have to change this address to the outside world. It's unchanged. That's a very nice feature. And maybe it reminds you of another property we, we have at other levels of database management that is physical data independence. Physical data independence. And here we also have some sort of physical data independence with respect to those addresses inside a page. We don't expose the offsets inside a page. We have these logical addresses. And as long as we don't move data outside the page, we don't have to inform any user of that address. So of course, if we go back, those row IDs will be referred to in other places of the database. And whenever we change it, all users of that row ID have to change their address as well. 
So an important property of those slotted pages is anyone who's using, who's making a reference to such an address in the database system doesn't have to be informed if anything is moved around inside the page. So that's very handy. You don't have to update the references. That's a major property of slotted pages. So we can move around the data inside the page. It's all fine. We don't have to change any of the addresses. That works pretty well. So what happens if we delete data? Well, if we delete data, we basically assume we want to delete this entry here. All we have to do we, is we simply delete this arrow here. We just have to kick this arrow and then the data is logically deleted, basically. So all we have to do is we have to replace this entry by something that means not existent. So slotted pages grow from two sides. So the header is usually a fixed size, but all the data part is organized in a way that those slots grow from top to bottom and those actual data entries grow from bottom to top. That is what those arrows signal. Keep in mind that actually a page is not two-dimensional. So here in the visualization, it looks as if it were a two-dimensional structure, but of course that's not the case. It's one-dimensional. So basically the, the slots in the page grow from left to right in this order. That is how the, the entries, the indirections to the data are inserted and the data grows from right to left bottom up so it's like this actually how data is organized and then you try to keep this area dense you try to keep this area dense then you make good use of the space available on that page so what you can also do with slotted pages is sometimes you you make a decision to move such a chunk to another page and then of course the trivial option would be to to update the reference to that tuple to all users. But you don't have to do that. So another second option here is when you move, say, this chunk to another page, you move the chunk here, then of course it gets another entry here in this array of, of the different slots of, of that particular page. But then rather than removing this entry here, you can also insert a special tuple and that's called a forward tuple ID. So what this means is, if someone still has a reference of 56,2, so let's say that's used in some data structure or some index, then the index will eventually go to this slot, this is 56.2, but it won't find the actual data here. It will find another reference, another forward reference saying 42.3. So the actual data sits at page 42 in slot 3. So let's go there. Slot 3 points to this offset here and here we have the actual data. So this has some advantages. The advantage is you don't have to change the address to the outside world. This is a very handy approach in situations where many users refer to this address then you don't have to inform them, then you don't pay the price for the update costs. However, the price you pay is whenever someone looks up this specific address, there are two lookups involved. So you're looking it up in this page, page 56, and you're looking it then up in page 42. So rather than going directly to page 42, you first do a hop through page 56, which has a small performance penalty. So this is also the reason why usually forward tuple IDs are only used once for a specific tuple. So of course, if you make a decision here to move this tuple again to another page, you might insert another forward tuple ID. This is usually not done because then you would introduce more and more hops and end up with long chains of hopping through different pages. So usually it's fine to use one of the forward IDs, but if you if you make a decision then to move this again to another page, then you should actually get rid of this one here, should delete it and inform all users to make reference to the new page. So assume we move this to, let's say, page 77, then you can kick it out here, make a forward reference here. Let's say it's 77 slot seven, for instance. 
And then you should inform all users. All those references should then be replaced by 77.7. .7. So bottom line, slotted pages, very important to organize data inside a page. So slotted pages provide a variant of physical data independence inside a particular page. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website Datenbankenlernen. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.